Hi everyone, uh, today's session is on online museums. So in today's session, we're gonna be talking about online museums, um, which museums offer different tours and how to take those tours. And we'll also be doing a live demo of a, one of the online tours. So first of all, what are online museums? So lots of different museums all across the globe have a virtual collection of some of their most famous exhibits as well as their more current exhibits. So the, um, the virtual tours are great because uh, especially during the pandemic, it's not exactly safe to go to a museum. You can still learn a lot without having to expose yourself to the virus. So um, some pros and cons of virtual museums. So most virtual museums are free and you don't have to leave the comfort of your home. And as mentioned earlier, you can stay safe while still getting the unique experiences. And you might also be able to see museums that you might not be able to travel to if they're in other countries. But um, some cons are, it might be a bit confusing and you can't always change the size of the text. So it might be hard to read some exhibits. Um, and it's not the same as being in there in person because you still can't see the whole thing sometimes. And you do need an internet connection as well as a device that is compatible with the museum. So what are some of the museums that will give you a virtual tour? One of them is the Smithsonian National Museum of His Nat Natural History. So if you click this link in the presentation, um, you'll see a visit tab. So by clicking that, there'll be a little menu that pops up. Um, if, and if you click the menu button, there'll be a little pop-up menu again that will say virtual tours towards the bottom. And by clicking that, you can access the virtual tours. So the Smithsonian page should look like this. You can see the bar at the top. The first button is visit. So by clicking that, you'll see this page and the menu button in the image on the right it's orange and there's three lines with the word menu. So by clicking that, you'll see a pop-up menu like on the right. And um, at the bottom, there's virtual tour. So by clicking that, you'll be taken to uh, the page. As for how to navigate it, you'll see a few different options. So there's permanent exhibits, current exhibits, and one feature that you wouldn't get in person is past exhibits. So something that's taken down, you're still able to see it. There's also a support center and research stations and some other tours as well as narrated tours. And they usually have the same controls. So once you've launched a tour, there's a bar you can see in the bottom of this image um, that you can use to navigate. And at the top, you can see different floors. So there's a ground first and second. And by clicking those, you'll be taken to a different floors of the museum. In the image, you can see in the top right, that's like a floor plan of the museum. So if you ever want to know where you are, or if you want to go somewhere, you can use that to navigate. So as for the bar, this is a more detailed image. So at the very left and the very right, you can see two arrows, and those are for moving from left to right. Uh, these arrows towards the middle are for changing your view. And if you have a keyboard, you're also able to just use the arrow keys. Um, this button here with the arrows pointing outwards, that's full screen. So it'll take up your whole screen. And if you click this icon again, you'll be able to exit full screen. This arrow with the line on top of it, that will hide this menu. So if you don't want this taking up your screen, Maybe it's covering some text. You can click that and then this icon, you'll see it again, but upside down by clicking that, you can bring this bar back up. The plus and minus signs, those are to zoom in. So maybe if your text is too small, you can use that you want to read it better. And once you're done, you can use a minus sign. This here is virtual reality. So you can move your head around and just like in real life, it would look like you're moving around, but virtual reality tends to make people feel a bit nauseous. So if you're prone to that, you might want to avoid it. 
there's also narrated tours. This is a very different format. So if you click this option, it'll just show videos and you can scroll through them. So the one you wanna watch, you can click on it and you can view it just like any YouTube video you might watch. Another one, that another museum that offers a virtual tour is the British Museum. So it's a very different experience from some other museums and this link here, you can use that to access the website. Now you'll see this image here once it loads. Um, so as for how it works, it's fairly simple. So it's divided up into different regions of the world. You can see Africa, Americas, Asia, Europe, and Oceania. And on the left of this image, you can see going back in time. So you can select any one of the little bubbles and you can press learn more on a little pop-up menu. And it'll take you to a picture like this on the bottom. Now it'll show a picture of the exhibit as well as a description. And you can also play the audio if you have, you're having trouble seeing it. You're also able to use Google Maps and see where exactly it was found. It'll also show you some similar objects. So if you wanna see something that came from the same place or has similar meanings, you can use the images down towards the bottom. Now back on the timeline screen, if you wanna go back in time, not actually, but in terms of the museum, you'll see two arrows towards the left of your screen, as you can see in this image at the top. So pressing the up arrow will take you further back in time to see older exhibits. Pressing the down arrow will bring you more towards the modern day if you wanna see more modern exhibits. Towards the right, you'll see a little eye icon. By pressing that, you'll see this menu at the right of this image at the bottom. Um, you'll see a few different options those are grouped by category. So if you wanna see something more art related or if you're maybe interested in trade, you can click those options and it'll narrow down the artifact you see to that specific category. There's also the Royal Ontario Museum or ROM, which offers some online experiences. So you can click this website and on the home page, the third option from the left on this bar is ROM at home. You can explore the different experiences there. So when you come, when you click that, you'll see lots of different options. So towards the right, you can see some upcoming events. So these are usually live streams that you can view on YouTube or the ROM website. So if you don't feel like going through a tour, this is like what would happen if you went to the auditorium in the museum. You can also filter this. So maybe you're doing this with uh, kids. You might want to avoid some things that are more adult, whether it's too complicated or the subject just isn't appropriate. But if you want more of a wide experience, you can choose adults or you can choose not to filter it at all. Um, the Louvre also offers some very immersive online experiences. So you can go to the Louvre website and it's important that you have this slash en at the end of your link because that ensures that's in English or else your page will be in French. And if you don't understand French, it'll be very confusing for you. So once you're on that page, you'll have to scroll down and you'll see a few images like kind of like this. And there'll be some arrows that you can use to navigate left and right. So you can navigate until you see virtual tours as you can see towards the right of this image, it's a bit cut off. You can click that and you'll be able to launch different tours. So once you launch a tour, you, there's several different options. And this image here is a bottom as just an example. So you can use the arrows at the points on your screen to just look up, down, left and right. And although it's not shown in this image, you can also uh, zoom in and zoom out, as well as make it full screen. There's also an option, if you're confused, it'll explain the controls for you. Um, on certain exhibits, there will be a magnifying glass that might show some text or show an image of the exhibit if it's kind of tilted away from you. 
Some other online activities you can do on the Lufa website are stories. So on the same Lufa at home page, you can find stories and you can pick a story and watch a YouTube video that will describe, um, again, it's like the auditorium at a museum. You can also pick a music option, which was featured in this image here. So it'll look something like that. You can select various kinds of music that they would exhibit at the loop by clicking that. There is some other uh, options for museums that weren't covered in this presentation. The Guggenheim Museum, the National Gallery of Art from Washington, DC, the Musée d'Orsay, the Pergamon Museum, uh, Vincent van Gogh Museum, and the Uffizi Gallery. This, of course, isn't a comprehensive list. Basically, every museum out there will have an online version. You can just Google your favorite museums. Chances are they'll offer a virtual tour. So now, a live demo of uh, one of the virtual museums. So this is the um, Louvre. So this is in the presentation. So by clicking the link you see in the presentation, uh, you'll be taken to this page. So Google Translate will probably give you an option to translate to English. Um, and by scrolling down on this page, you'll eventually um, find Louvre at home. Now you'll see two arrows towards the bottom of your screen. By clicking those, and you can see the virtual tours option. So by clicking that, basically this, to this page. So if you scroll down, there's a few different tours. So we'll just do um, the first one. So you can click launch virtual tour and it'll open a new page to load. Now at the bottom right, you can see full screen. By clicking that, everything else on your screen will disappear. And by clicking the icon in the bottom right, you can exit full screen. Now, a few other options are the I button that will give you more information and the question mark. That's if you're having trouble working out the controls, that'll give you some help. Now on the main screen, um, you can see different arrows. So the one at the top allows you to look up. The one at the bottom lets you look down and left and right allow you to change your view as well. Now over the bottom arrow, you can see the plus and minus signs. So by clicking those, you'll be able to zoom into an exhibit if the text is too small. And then once you're done, you can just press the zoom out button again. Then um, in this version here, you can see a little mouse icon. So if you click that, you'll be taken ahead into here, this is the entrance. Um, this is just one exhibit. So then you might want to turn left a bit because it is a bit hard to see. And then if you're having trouble reading this, you can always press the plus button, zoom in. And as you can see towards the left of the screen, there's, or once you're done reading, you can zoom out. If you go left, you can see this little question mark icon. So if you hover over that, it'll expand the text for you to read. Here it's in French because it is the Louvre, but um, there should be an option for you to translate it into English somewhere. So then you can always zoom in again to read the exhibit and zoom out. So if we turn right again, uh, we can see the next place to go just by clicking the mouse icon. So that's how you be able to move forward. Now here you can see again another question mark icon that'll zoom in the text. You can also see a magnifying glass icon towards the right. So by clicking that, it will zoom in a picture. So that image there was kind of tilted away. So this lets you see it better. Little X icon that should allow you to close the image. The Twitter and Facebook stuff can get in the way of it. So you might have to just kind of work around that. Now, if you ever want to go back, you can 
turn around just by using the left and right arrows. Uh, if you hold those down for a while, as you can see, the mouse icon pops up. And if you click that, you're able to go back. So if you wanted to uh, look at something again, or maybe you missed something, you can always use that option to navigate back. And, and that concludes the live demo of online galleries.